<laughs> oh, morning, boys. So, after years of development, the Gorilla Man himself finally released TDX. Now, me being me, when I saw this, I didn't give a single thought in the universe about the game whatsoever. Instead, my brain just said, how can I turn this into 3D modeling? So naturally, I just started modeling the towers. I'm in a weird cycle, like I don't play video games anymore, I'll just 3D model everything from the games that I used to play. So I uploaded this video of myself modeling the Juggernaut from TDX. And since it was a somewhat complex model, and I know you guys love Roblox characters, I decided to make a video breaking down the whole speed model, and it basically turned into a whole tutorial on how to make TDX towers in general. So buckle up and enjoy. Now TDX models can be classed as having extremely detailed weapons, overly detailed headpieces, and very low poly body parts. It creates a pretty interesting style that actually fits the game pretty well. To showcase this style properly, I'm going to be making one of the towers from the game. This chunky guy, who can probably bench like 5 plates. I started by getting a couple reference images and my homemade R6 rig. If you're having trouble recreating it, I left a link for you guys to purchase it in the description. After getting these guys into Blender, I started with the arms, of course. After making a simple extrusion for the hands, I just started stacking and beveling cubes to copy the armor on the reference image. The interesting thing about this guy is that all of the pads on his armor have really high poly bevel angles, but everything else about them is pretty low poly. So the contrast between the level of polygons in the bevels and the quad faces was definitely something to keep in mind for the style. As I made some final extrusions and auto smoothed a few things, I was pretty happy with the arms. Of course, I just used a mirror modifier to make the second one. They will make your lives 10 times easier, so always use them when you can. The legs were a bit trickier, since I couldn't find any good reference images for them online. I ended up doing a lot of the modeling just from my own head, and kind of adding whatever I thought fit. So I added some boots and armor, which were the only things that I could see in the actual reference image, and I added some weird pauldron looking things to the top of the legs. Fresh out of Star Wars, baby. I also chucked these weird scope looking things onto the side of the legs to add some spice to it. And that was really all I could come up with. I didn't want to add too much since the style of the game was pretty low poly, so I just left it at that. Torso! This whole deal was about copying the reference image pixel for pixel, except for the back, which I couldn't see. <sighs> extrude, bevel, scale, scale, bevel, extrude. Extrude and oh, oh, oh dang, I actually made something. The nice thing about having simplistic body parts is you literally just copy the reference image without having to use any weird tools. Just extrude, bevel, and scale. For the back, I just used the same tools as the front and came up with this kind of goofy looking pattern, but it wasn't too bad. Oh, and this freaking headpiece took me like an hour to do. I started with this little ring around the bottom with a small extrusion near the mouthpiece. After that, I added the mouthpiece, and basically the whole bottom part of it. Next was the top part, which I spent a while shaping to sort of resemble the reference image. It was definitely hard to see the complete shape of the helmet, so I just did the best I could. This is why it's useful to have reference images from multiple perspectives for headpieces, because the axis of depth is really hard to recreate yourself. After the top bit though, I just created the goggles on a plane, lined up the vertices with the reference image, gave them a thick old solidify modifier, and chucked them onto the head. Now the minigun was pretty easy. I just made a tri-barrel, scaled it out, extruded the covering at the end, merged a couple extra vertices, and added the barrels to the end of it. Nice and easy, no trouble at all. Now do it four more times! C calm down, I'm joking. Just mirror a few times. See? No harm done. Once over the x-axis, once over the y-axis, and you've saved yourself 30 minutes of modeling. Follow me for more tips. Oh yeah, and I just kinda copied the reference image for the main body. It was an easy shape to recreate, and it was pretty cube-like, so I didn't have to do a whole lot. After extruding out the back face, I made these little side ammo feeders. The process for modeling them was pretty simple, but I don't want to explain it too much since obviously you guys' time is valuable. But let's just say I extruded, beveled, and scaled. Once again, they were pretty easy since the reference image basically had a floodlight on them at all times. Next up, I made the side plates for them. All it took was reshaping a cube and insetting the inside of it. It took me a while to find a good spot for them though, but after that I just extruded a small handle from them. And finally it was all about stacking some cubes at the back to finish the main body. I didn't put that much thought into this part, just some beveling here and there, added a handle there, made a little ammo belt there, and bam! Honestly cube stacking will get you pretty far in life. And of course I did color everything. 
I started by trying to match the colors from the reference. The color picker didn't work that well since the lighting for material preview mode is kind of terrible. And of course, you've heard me say this before, to see how I colored all these models in great detail, be sure to check out my coloring tutorial. Once that was done though, I just posed him, added some tiny details to the handle, since the preview render looked a little bit weird, and I rendered it. The lighting as well was pretty basic, just a sun at max brightness that I rotated until it didn't look like total garbage. All of this was done in Eevee of course, since rendering in cycles while recording is an easy recipe for your PC to catch fire. And the final result was actually good, I'm pretty happy with it. I hope you all learned something from this, and now go show my boy Johnny some love by playing TDX. See ya!